we have a situation. So for those of you who've been following us for a while now, you know that we use Workaway to travel on a budget. And honestly, over the past week, we have been scrambling due to a number of unforeseen circumstances, just mainly down to bad luck as well. We've had a host cancel on us and just a number of hosts not get back to us. So honestly, we've been traveling from day to day, not really knowing where we're heading the next day, and it's been pretty stressful. Luckily, I randomly saw something once about a city here in Croatia called Pula. Now, the reason it stood out to me was because when you think Croatia, you think the seaside islands, tiny seaside villages, but I can almost guarantee that you will be surprised by what you find here in Pula. Right, ready? Yep. Sarah and Murray. In October 2020, we left our home country of South Africa and set out to see the world using budget travel strategies to make our travels last as long as possible. From working on a traditional winery in Georgia, to a sailboat in Turkey, to attempting to hitchhike over 1,800 kilometers in four days, our budget travels have by no means been boring or uneventful. We can't wait to see what's next. Are you guys as surprised as we are to find a place like this here in Croatia? This incredibly impressive structure is called the Arena, or basically the Pula Amphitheatre, and it is the sixth largest amphitheatre in the world. Now on top of that interesting information, it's amazing to see how intact the structure still is. It's been preserved so well and it's because of that point that they actually still make use of the arena today. They host concerts and cultural events and instead of this place just staying dormant and unused, they're actively using it and keeping the history alive. So this arena or amphitheater is actually the main attraction of Pula and it's visited by four hundred thousand people per year and there's quite an interesting story about it as well in the 16th century there was an attempt to demolish the entire structure and take it stone by stone all the way to venice luckily that demolition was prevented okay but why have we actually come to pull so we're going to go around today and show you some of the sites and also we haven't tasted any croatian food yet so we thought that we'd use this as an opportunity to do that One road, two roads, three roads, four roads, five, six roads, all leading into this one intersection point. Crazy. I don't know why I find that crazy. I've just come to a traditional Croatian restaurant. Full disclosure, we researched budget-friendly restaurants and this is the first one that popped up. This restaurant seems to be a grill restaurant, which means that every single item on the menu is all meat, except for well, this one little item right here, which is vegetarian. Something that we've learned during our time here in Croatia is that meat forms a massive part of the Croatian diet, which basically means that I'm in heaven right now. Just being in here, all you smell is just a smell of grilled meats and fires in the background. It's just it's a really nice place to be. Surprise, surprise! Marek is definitely the bigger beer fan out of the two of us, but this beer is really, really good. It's called Pun, and it's so light and sweet. And for me, and my personal preference in beer, I would say this is probably close to the favorite, best beer I've ever tasted. <laughs> okay, hold on. Look at the size of this thing. Just like. <laughs> I don't know the name of it, but it's basically a traditional Croatian hamburger that has been stuffed with sheep's cheese in a traditional Croatian bun. It smells incredible. I'm very excited for this. That is the best that I've ever tasted. The meat is nice and soft and like succulent and then you've got the cheese on the inside that brings a nice little... But it's also got a bit of lemon juice as well, so it's like a lemony juice, sheep's cheese flavour inside of a perfectly grilled patty or hamburger. Oh my, I need to taste the bread as well. 
This is good. This is just down wrong. Good. Our next dish, once again, we don't know the name, but we'll put it in the video, is this. It looks incredible. Some more little pieces of meat. It comes with a side of sheep's cheese and some freshly cut, cut onions. Let's give this a taste. I'm a little bit speechless. <laughs> this meat is incredible, so succulent, so delicious. And this sheep's cheese is so creamy, but not that usual really, really strong flavor that you would get with sheep's cheese. It somehow is just creamy and quite sweet and gentle, the flavor. So I really, really like that. This is really good food. <laughs> really good and not what I expected. I don't actually know what I was expecting of Croatian cuisine, but this is amazing. I'm not even just saying this. That was honestly one of the best meals I've ever eaten. That's the type of restaurant where once you go and sit down there, you can spend the entire day at. <laughs> They've just lit the fireplace. The food is amazing. The atmosphere is even better. It's just a really nice place to be and on top of it all, it really felt like that was like a neighborhood restaurant. It feels like that's where the locals go and enjoy food with their family rather than being like a touristic restaurant and it's really nice. But there's more for us to see so we've got to keep moving. This market is really cool, but it's very quiet, lots of empty stalls. We're here in the low season, as you can probably tell, we're pretty chilly. <laughs> so this is not the time of year when people want to come and visit Croatia. A big thing here seems to be truffles and truffle oil. We haven't tried any yet, we're hoping to, but the one stall lady was telling us that her boss uses dogs to find the truffles, and two years ago he was actually put into the Guinness Book of World Records for finding the largest truffle in the world. I think it was like a kg, which is insane to think about because when you see them in the little bottles, they're really small, like a couple of grams each. So to think of one that's a kg, wow. <laughs> Not really the route that's recommended on Google Maps, but there's a bit of shortcuts. <laughs> Things you make me do, so that shortcut through the bushes led us to the Pula Fortress. So it was built in the 17th century by the Venetians, and its main objective was to be built as a fortress around the center of Pula. So this actually used to be the center of Pula. And as far as you know, there's an entrance fee. So that is why we are on the outside of the fortress. This is the temple of Augustus. It was built in the 2nd century BC and it's had a number of purposes throughout its lifetime including being a church and a storehouse for grain up until it was bombed and completely destroyed in the Second World War. Luckily it was restored just a couple of years later and been given a lapidarian purpose which means that it's been used to store stones and fragments of archaeological importance Don't worry, we had to Google Lapidarian as well. <laughs> we didn't know what that meant. It's a big word, and a word I can honestly say I've never heard before. That pretty much rounds out the sites that we wanted to see here in Pula, but we have heard that Pula is known for having really good seafood. So we can't think of a better way to end this video than tasting some of the local seafood. But now- First, we gotta find some though. We need to find a restaurant <laughs> that's within our budget range, because we've been looking in some of these places are really expensive. <laughs> so we got 
got some bad news and we got some good news. How about the bad news? We didn't find seafood. Well, we did. We found a lot of seafood, but it was all really expensive and not necessarily traditional Croatian cuisine. So we didn't feel like it was worth it. But what we did find was an Istrian inspired or Istrian flavored pizza. Istria is the region or the province of Croatia that we're in right now. Now we haven't even had a look at this yet. We're waiting to sit down and find a nice place to eat it. Oh, look how good that looks. Mm, this ham has a really distinct flavor. It's really good, really gentle flavors, but they're just so nice really good score for me. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, Marek. This one's got, mm, this one's got a lot of cheese. Mm, this one. First thing to take note of. Ah, uh, yes. Wood oven, boy. <laughs> this ham is so nice. The ham is slightly salted, ever so slightly salted. It's finely cut together with the cheese and the tomato sauce and the olives. Just like a well, flavor explosion. I'm not even just saying this, this is a, it's a really good pizza. And to keep in line with our Croatian food tour, we've got another Croatian beer, but I need to open it first. I think I believe that. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if I believe it. I'm sitting right here. <laughs> It's like a sweet zing. That is lovely. I think your beer is not your beer anymore. <laughs> yes. It's a yes from me. If you're ever in Croatia or Pula, give this beer a try. So our thoughts on Pula. Honestly, it's a really nice city. It's beautiful. It's really walkable. There are nice things to see. My highlight was the Colosseum or the arena. I just found it stunning and so impressive. And it was just a really nice and relaxing day. Oh, the food as well. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Although we only had two dishes, the food that we did have was so delicious. Good. And again, that meal that we had early on in the day, that stuffed sheep's cheese burger. One of the best meals that I've ever eaten in my entire life. All right, but where to from here? <laughs> we actually don't know. <laughs> we and we're are, leaving tomorrow. <laughs> we're leaving tomorrow. And we are uh. either staying in Croatia or we are heading to Bosnia Herzegovina. Now this is all waiting on the responses of Workaway hosts. And I mean, again, it's tomorrow that we are leaving and we still don't know. But don't worry, wherever we go, you'll see it in the next video. <laughs> but if you've made it to this point, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Wherever we may be. <laughs> Why do cats always do that? This market is really cool, but it's really, really quiet. I think... I was talking when you... <laughs> Back in the day, it was built and meant... It was what? And back in the day, it was actually built and its main objective was to be, was what? As a fortress. Yacht brush. And it has now been, oh, I was doing so well. Opa. Why does that sound like a war warning? Alright. <laughs>